Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to be asking a question about pots. And is this a pot that we should never use for our bromeliads? So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing. It's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun. And why don't we talk about terracotta pots for our bromeliads? So, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. It's good to have you with us. If you like what you see, do me a favor. Hit that like button down there. And why don't you become part of our bromeliad family and become a subscriber? Thanks a lot. Now, let's get to today's video. So, okay, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about terracotta pots. And I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm going to tell you that I don't think terracotta is the best pot to put your bromeliad in. Now I'm not talking about doing pot in pot. That's kind of cool. And it doesn't make for a bad looking display if you've got them on your deck or patio or even inside. But what I'm talking about is taking your potting mix and putting your potting mix right directly into terracotta and then planting your bromeliad in it. Now before I get going guys, if you already have your bromeliad planted directly into terracotta, don't go and repot it. If it's been growing for you and it's been doing well, by golly, you know success is the key. And proof is in the growing, but I'm going to make my case why if you haven't already done that, don't. Okay, so why don't I like terracotta for putting bromeliads in? Um, the main reason is that terracotta wicks away moisture. Now, why is that a problem for our bromeliads? Well, for the most part, our bromeliads really do benefit from having at least an evenly moist or damp substrate in the pot. Remember that their root system, like the root system on this Neo Regilia Grows Red Tiger, the root system in there will absorb water in addition to the water that is in the central tank. So if you use terracotta and you put your potting mix directly in there, it makes it difficult to dial up the amount of moisture that you're going to have in your potting mix because your potting mix is going to have its moisture wicked away by this terracotta pot. So why is that a problem? Well, I'm going to put my potting mix right in here. And I'm spilling it all over the place. But I want to make a point. And then I'm going to pack it down in here. And then I'm going to water it. And I'm going to get this thoroughly wet. And it's kind of hard to see, but I'm trying to get this about as wet as I can because I'm going to be putting a bromeliad in there and the terracotta right now is absorbing a lot of that water. So we're going to come back to this and we're going to take a look and see after a while just exactly uh, how much water is left in that potting mix. So I'm going to show you something right here and it's a little hard to see but maybe you can see the color difference. Take a look. See where this terracotta up here is dry. Look how the color has changed down here and the terracotta has wicked away all of the moisture in there you go. Now I got her in the frame. It's wicked away all of the moisture and take a look. It's not very wet and I really soaked that. You can see right there. See right here? It's got um, a little bit of moisture where I spilled it. But look down here. Look at the terracotta and it's, it's wet. And terracotta does that. And that's not a bad thing if perhaps you're growing plants that need to have their root system dry. But it, for the most part, this is not a good thing. And I really thoroughly wet this down. 
So what I want to do is I want to um, illustrate just how much this wicks water. So I'm putting some water in the base of this tray and we're going to see how much water is left. Now terracotta absorbs an awful lot of uh, moisture um, and we don't want that for most of our bromeliads. So I'm going to leave that there for a second. We're going to come on back to it. And you can already see this is not even a minute that has gone by and I want you to take a look at that moisture line that's above the water. Take a look at that. That is in less than 60 seconds and that terracotta is wicking that water right up into the pot. So right after that uh, last uh, shot, I got a timer and we're timing it right now. Take a look. Look at that line. And now that line looks to be, oh gee whiz, about a quarter of an inch above the water line where before it was just an eighth. And we're going to take a look at this in another couple of minutes. So here we are at six minutes and that is a noticeable difference. Now that's only six minutes. Now yes it's sitting in a pool of water and no I did not water any substrate in that pot but this really does illustrate the wicking capability and action of terracotta. Okay, so now we're at 15 minutes and take a look at the moisture ring that is on this terracotta pot and it's at least a half an inch above the water line. So this shows that terracotta does have, I'd say, a pretty dramatic wicking effect on water um, when you water your plants. Now I'm going to freely admit here guys that this is not the same. This is really to uh, show how much it will wick water up. It's going to do it over a longer period of time with uh, the substrate when you try and water the substrate and anything to the edge of the pot is going to wick away first but it will wick it away just at a a uh, longer period of time um, if you have substrate in the pot but this shows um, pretty dramatically after where are we 16 minutes how much terracotta uh, will wick water away so if you individually water your plants well you're going to be paying more attention to this than you would the rest of your bromeliads and if that's what you do maybe this isn't such a bad idea but honestly guys most of the time when I water I water everything that I have up here on the plant deck and in my greenhouse and you know what I really don't have the time with all of the bromeliads that I've got to dial up each individual plant depending on the pot that it's growing in and terracotta just because it wicks an awful lot of moisture away from the substrate that you have is going to require more watering than all of your other plants so i'm probably going to get a couple of comments uh, and I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute, but I want to tell you I really do want your comments and your questions and suggestions. I don't care what they are, but I think one of the comments is going to be, well, Rusty, I grow some more terrestrial type uh, of bromeliads and like this Puya mirabilis here and this cute little Dikia. Take a look at that spiny little guy. I like him. So, I'm going to get some comments, I think, and someone's going to say, um, why shouldn't I grow my more arid liking bromeliads in terracotta? And you can. But I'm going to tell you something about at least both of these guys. They are seasonally dry where they grow in the wild. 
and they do benefit quite nicely from being watered at a, on a regular basis. They don't like it soaking, sopping wet, but they certainly can handle some watering. And if I'm growing these guys, or I'm growing these guys, it doesn't make any difference, guys. I'm going to water everything at the same time. And if I do that, this is going to dry out all the rest of my plants. Now you can plant your dikias and puyas um, in, in terracotta and they probably won't do poorly, but you're still going to have to dial up and individualize your watering schedule. So okay guys, that's it. Now look, if you have bromeliads that are already planted in your terracotta pots, don't take them out. And you know, I always say if it's working, why mess with it? So if you're having success with this and you have your watering dialed up in order to suit the plants that you have planted in terracotta, by all means go for it. You know, the proof really is in the growing. So, no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. I do know that you and I need to keep growing and have lots of fun. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.